Eternity's Edge is a returning Warlock sword found in Season of the Splicer, and this one is a Vortex Frame Sword, so very similar to Falling Guillotine, but something that only a Warlock can wield. So all of the class-specific swords made a return this season, so today I'm going to look at the stats the God Rolls to chase, plus how to get Eternity's Edge in Destiny 2. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content or turn on notifications by hitting that bell. Well, Eternity's Edge is a legendary Warlock Solar Power Sword. It's got a vortex frame, meaning you can launch a heavy spin attack, and heavy attacks are stronger with full energy. So looking at the stats, we've got a swing speed of 46, 60 for impact, 50 for range, 10 for efficiency, 60 for defense, a charge rate of 32, and this one has an ammo capacity of 62. Well, next up, let's have a look at Eternity's Edge God Roll Guide. And for PvE, I do have a couple of decent rolls. So Hungry Edge, Infinite Guard, Relentless Strikes, and Assassin's Blade. That would be a really good roll. So Hungry Edge, that will give you more ammo capacity and also more in the magazine. Then Infinite Guard gives you more stability, defense, efficiency, and inventory size. Relentless Strikes means three light attacks within a short time grant sword ammo. And then finally, Assassin's Blade boosts movement speed and damage. Another good roll is Jagged Edge, Tireless Blade and Surrounded. So Jagged Edge gives you an increase in impact, but reduces magazine and ammo capacity. And Tireless Blade will grant sword ammo on every other powered sword kill. And then Surrounded grants bonus damage when there's three or more enemies in close proximity. So in general, for this sword counter-attack, an energy transfer makes for a really good interesting style of blocking before immediately fighting back and he grants you rift energy in the process. So this is a great sword for warlocks in terms of pure survivability in PvE. But if you care more about damage, then maybe go for something like Relentless Strikes and Surrounded. That is a good roll. For PvP, I would probably recommend other swords like Solar Scar or Fallen Guillotine as they have better purples. But, but if you use Eternity's Edge in PvP, let me know down in the comments what you think of it, and let me know what role you are using in PvP. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to get Eternity's Edge in Destiny 2. So this one is a random drop from activities, as all of these class-specific swords are in the world loot pool at the moment. So therefore, hop on with your Warlock, run strikes, crucible, gambit, complete world activities like public events, patrols, or sectors, and then this one will drop for you, I think. I had some really good luck the other day running some strikes. This one dropped for me in a strike. Then I jumped on with my Hunter, and I got the Hunter class specific sword too. So that must have been a lucky day for swords, that one. So basically, just use your Warlock, and with it being in the world loot pool, it will drop for you eventually. Just try and get as many engrams as you possibly can. Well, that is a little bit about the stats the God Rolls to chase, and also how to get Eternity's Edge. And next up, I'm going to put together a solar Warlock PvE build which is tailored around Eternity's Edge. So let's get into it. Well, first up with the exotic armor, I'm going to be using Sun Braces. So Sun Braces are exotic Warlock Gauntlets. Comes with a perk Helium Spiral, so it increases the duration and solar melee kills grant unlimited solar grenade energy for a brief time. For the subclass, I'm using Attunement of Sky. So this one comes with Celestial Fire. So you send out a spiral of three explosive solar energy blasts. I'm using Wing Sun, so fire weapons, send celestial fire, throw grenades while gliding. Airborne final blows extend the effects of heat rises and grants melee energy. Then we've got heat rises to hold your grenade button or key to consume your grenade energy to extend the glide time and improve in-air accuracy. There's also Icarus Dash, activate while mid-air to dodge twice. So there's definitely loads of benefits there from Top Tree Solar Warlock. But next up, let's have a look at the weapons we're going to use. So for the Kinetic weapon, I'm using Ignition Code. That is one of the Season of the Splicer weapons. Really, really good Kinetic Grenade Launcher, that one. And then for my Energy weapon, I'm going to be using Sunshot. And this one is going to be combined with one of my mods to create Warmind Cells. And Sunshot is really, really good. I haven't used it for a while. And I think it is the only 150 hand cannon in the game right now because I was using it and it felt really, really fast. Plus, created all those Warmind Cells and it goes really well with this Solar Warlock PV build. And finally, in the power slot, we're using Eternity's Edge, and this is the solar power sword that this guide is built around. Well, next up, let's have a look at the mods. So, we're using Elemental Charge, so become Charged Light by picking up an Elemental Well, and if the Elemental Well's element matches your subclass element, you gain two stacks of Charge with Light. Using Elemental Ordnance, so defeating a combatant with a grenade spawns an Elemental Well that matches a subclass energy type, 
And then Frontal Wisdom, so picking up an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type, grants you a temporary significant increase to your intellect, improving the recharge rate of your super. And it basically gives you a plus 50 intellect boost for 30 seconds, so it's really good to boost your super regeneration absolutely significantly. Next, we're using Energy Accelerant, so your Dragonfly Chain Reaction and Firefly Explosions deal much more damage. And this one could be found on the Seasonal Artifact. I'm using Wrath of Rasputin, so Solar Splash Damage can create War Mine Cells, and we are definitely going to be creating plenty of Solar Splash Damage, so Wrath of Rasputin adds extra punch to this Solar Warlock PvE build. We'll put that all together, run around, and you're going to be firing out that Solar Damage left, right, and center, and killing all enemies in your path. But let me know what you think about the Eternity's Edge in the comments. Plus, if you've got any improvements to the build, do let us know and share them with the community. Well, that is it for this guide for how to get Eternity's Edge in Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. If you want to join the community, check out the Discord link in the description. Or you can follow me on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again. See you soon.